All right, so everybody had the three basic trig functions down, which was great, opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. That was good. I didn't see any problem there um, at all. Not an issue there. Reciprocal ratios, some of you don't have those down yet. You got to get those down. You just got to tie the two together. You got to tie sine in with cosecant. Remember, it's a function and it's co. So cosine already has a co, so it's got to be the reciprocal one without the co. The only one is the secant. And then the tangent goes with its actual co, cotangent. Those all go together. You got to get those reciprocal ones together. Um, a lot of you missed the question where you simply just had to give the ratio. Meaning I asked for the cosine of an angle and all you had to do was give the opposite over the, um, I'm sorry, the adjacent over the hypotenuse for the cosine. Some of you didn't know what that meant, even though I said give the exact value and give the ratio. The ratio is a fraction. Therefore, you should have been expecting to give a fraction. And remember, we'll always, in that case, simplify the radicals because we're looking to give an exact answer. Okay? That's not something you're going to punch in the calculator. So those are the, the second couple questions. Then you had a section where you were just punching calculator buttons to a degree. Um, you got to remember that the sine, cosine, tangent buttons output on the screen the ratio divided out already in decimal form. Your calculator takes that fraction and divides it into a decimal round off. And that's what you're putting on your paper. And therefore, we want four places when we do decimal round off. Did have a couple minutes, um, seconds, uh, degrees, minutes, seconds in there to, to put in the mix. And then the reciprocal ratios. So see again, if you don't know the reciprocal ratios, you can't do a problem like, what's the cosecant of 32 degrees? Well, that's just punching in the calculator if you know the reciprocal relationships. So be careful there. Then the second set was finding the angle. And again, you got to have in your mind that if you have a trig function, for example, sine x, then what we're looking for is the value of x if they give you then that ratio. And they can give you the ratio two different ways. All right, so anyhow, I don't want to get too far afield, but that's the basis so far of what we've been doing. All right? Uh, problems like the problems on the back are the nuts and bolts of trig. So you got a triangle. Hey, tell me what the angle is. You've got a triangle. Hey, what's the value of this side? That's the nuts and bolts of trigonometry. You definitely got to be able to solve those type of problems. Okay? That's the beginnings, and then we're going to build off of that. All right. So now we got to get to the aspects of special triangles. Special triangles. All right, what happens is this. When you, those of you that will go on to advanced math, and not everybody will, but those of you who do, when you go on to advanced math, you will deal intensively with trigonometry. Intensively. Because pretty much most of higher level maths involve trigonometry. It's the angles of trigonometry that allow you to do a lot of things besides just vertical and horizontal because things have to be on an angle. It comes into play in a lot of different places. And so um, with trigonometry then comes certain key angles. And those key angles are 30, 60, and uh, 45. So that's the case. So special triangles allow you to determine the exact values of the trig functions for, let's list it this way. We'll start with 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 30 degrees and 60 degrees and all their coterminal angles I'll talk about the word coterminal a little bit more um, next week week after whenever we get there and try to explain to you what that means but in a nutshell here's the idea coterminal all right don't write this let's just look right here in this space if I had a let's say 30 degree angle right here okay there's a certain let's say we're dealing with the sine the opposite right divided by the hypotenuse would it matter if this thing spun around 
for 360 more degrees and all of a sudden we have a 390 degree angle? And the answer would be no. Okay. It wouldn't matter. The sine of a 30 degree angle is exactly the same as the sine of a 390 degree angle. They're coterminal angles. Again, I'll talk about all that stuff later on, but there are an infinite number of coterminal angles for 45 degrees. There's an infinite number for 60 degrees. There's an infinite number for um, 30 degrees. So we'll deal with all of that stuff in a little bit. Okay, so we got to start off somewhere. So we're going to start off. Come on, erase. Thank you. Got to talk to it. So we're going to start with the 45, 45, 90 triangle. And uh, what it, the way you start is this thing is a right isosceles triangle. I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S, -E -E right? A right isosceles triangle. I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S. -E -E so you guys all learned that the legs of an isosceles triangle are congruent. And you also had a, I think it was postulate, may have been a theorem, probably a theorem where the angles opposite the congruent legs are themselves congruent, meaning this angle down here is congruent to that angle down there. And you guys did problems like this. So if that top angle is a 90 degree angle, what must both of these angles be? 45, all right. So that's a 45 degree angle and that's a 45 degree angle. And you guys even did these special triangles. This is all review. I should actually go faster, but that's not going to help you. Okay, so there's, remember, all trig is based upon similar triangles. And similar triangles, the angles are congruent and the sides are proportional. So because of that, there's all kinds of different triangles of this proportion. So, to make life easy on ourselves, what if I wanted to make one leg a value of 1? I can make it 5, but I'm going to make it 1. I can make it 10, I'm going to make it 1. I can make it 50, but I'm going to make it 1. I'm going to make it easy. So, if that left leg is 1, what's the right leg? 1, because they're congruent. So, then what is the hypotenuse? It is the square root of 2. It's the Pythagorean theorem. The square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared is the square root of 2. So the hypotenuse is the square root of 2. And that's the pattern. That's the pattern. On the SAT, they will give you a couple formulas to get you going. And when they do, they're going to take this right isosceles triangle. They're going to stick it up this way. They're going to show you a 45-degree angle there and a 45-degree angle there. They're going to put an S here and an S there. And therefore, then, what would the hypotenuse be? Okay, I think I heard S square root of 2, which usually you talking, you would say S times the square root of 2. All right, so S times the square root of 2. Because in reality, when you look at this pattern, maybe for some of you it will help, you can put a 1 in front of your square root of 2. Because remember, there's 1 in front of everything. We don't bother to put it. And notice that that 1 corresponds to the leg. So 1, 1, square root of 2. Okay, that's the idea, that's the concept, that's the pattern. So again, we used to make you memorize the pattern, but now they're giving you the pattern. And I still have to check on the ACT, but I think they, they give you the pattern as well. Okay, so let's do a couple situations here. First off, real simplistic, give the exact value of the cosine of 45 degrees. All right, if you're going to do this, you don't want to take your calculator, hit 45 degrees, punch the cosine button. Unfortunately, calculators today, some of them will give you actually the answer we're looking for, which is a shame. But believe me, they're not going to give you a question on the SAT where you can just punch the calculator and get the answer. Matter of fact, the new SAT, there's a section where you don't have a calculator. No calculator. You have to know what you're doing apart from your calculator. All right, anyhow. So, what does your calculator say? Point what? Point 0.7071, if round off, whatever. Okay. 
But we don't want that. We want the exact value because that is a round off. So how in the world are you going to get the exact value? Well, first off, you're going to say the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. I can do that. You can do that. Now pick either 45 degree angle you want. I'm going to do blue. So, oops, that's opposite. That's hypotenuse. I'll get there sooner or later. That is the adjacent side. Wonderful. All right, adjacent is one. And the hypotenuse is the square root of two. So you end up with one over. And again, you can put that one in front of the square root of two, but it's boring. And we're going to leave our answer like that. Just like on number three on the quiz, we certainly aren't going to leave a radical in the denominator. We're going to rationalize the denominator, right? Square root of two on the bottom. And whatever we do the bottom, do the same thing at the top. And finally, we end up with the fact that the cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of two over two. Elias. I got that answer when I punched it on the calculator. So can I just as long as as long as your calculator will do everything else you know that you have to know. So the answer could be yes, could be no. Depends on what the question is. So in other words, the question that you're asked for a problem. You may not just be able to punch it and get that. Okay. All right. So exact value, square root of 2 over 2. And if you divide square root of 2 by 2, you get back to 0 0.707, et cetera, and round off. Which, by the way, let me pause. If the cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2, what is the sine of 45? Square root of 2 over 2. Don't lose fact, don't lose sight of the fact that the sine of 10 is the cosine of 80. Right? Learn this the first day. Cosine of 50 equals the sine of 40. So the cosine of 45 has to equal the sine of 45. Same value. You follow? If they're the same. All right, tangent of 45 is really, really boring. But again, you're going to go opposite over adjacent. And as you can see, you just end up with 1 over 1. And that's a 1. So here's where you can get in trouble, Elias, with relying on your calculator. So why don't you guys all answer this question? Give me the secant of 45 degrees. Exact value. Secant 45 degrees. Exact value. Got it? You finding anything on your calculator, Elias? Yeah, you won't. But the answer is right there on the screen, right? Because everybody knows the secant is what? The hypotenuse over the adjacent. What's the hypotenuse? Square root of 2. What's the adjacent? So what's the value? Square root of 2. Right? Because we know the f how to apply the secant to a 45 degree angle from the pattern. From the pattern. Okay. Um, so then you end up with problems like this. And I got to get rid of my pattern so you guys can see. But you have it on your paper. All right. Let's see if I can just catch this first one. So given the triangle to the right, find y. This is a really, 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 really simplistic question. Really easy. <laughs> Once you understand what you're thinking, so you're looking at your pattern, right? So the legs of these of this isosceles triangle are congruent, right? Let me go back. So this is one, this is one, right? Those are the same. So if this is seven, though I didn't ask you for this leg, what's the leg down here? Seven. And again, if this is one, then the hypotenuse is one times the square root of two. So now the leg is 7, so the hypotenuse must be 7 times the square root of 2. And, and a problem like that, very simplistic answer, if you understand the pattern. So if you're looking at the pattern from the SAT, the leg is 7, and the hypotenuse is S, the leg, times the square root of 2, 7 times the square root of 2. 
that one's simplistic. No problem there, pretty easy. All right, in this one, it's similar. So if you're thinking about the SAT, what is the value of S? Three, right? Because three times the square root of two instead of one times the square root of two. So N's got to be three. That's a pretty easy question. And we didn't ask you for the other side, but the other side would be three as well. So again, we're going off the pattern. We're applying the pattern. We're applying the pattern. We're applying the pattern. Okay. Six is a little bit more abstract. So what are we going to do with six? I want to go higher here. So what's the value of S for number six? So again, some of you, the, your fraction challenge really hurts you. Because one-eighth times the square root of two is exactly the same thing as the square root of two over eight. Is it not? What's one times square root of two? Square root of two. What's eight times one? Eight. And again, you, you, you just got to be able to see that, that a one-eighth times the square root of two is the same as square root of two over eight. Therefore, the value of A is one-eighth. Once you figure out S, then it's a piece of cake. Now, you can do these problems with a proportion, and so I'll show you how to do that on the last one. Because the last one, we can't do any of that with it. Because what the bottom is supposed to be the square root of two, but instead it's the square root of six. Oh, yuck. So how about if we just make a proportion? Now, the way I taught you guys to do proportions, right, you're going to have a fraction on the left equal sign fraction on the right. And remember, we can use proportions because these are all similar triangles. And I always told you, hey, put what you're looking for on the top left. Okay. And I like to keep the left side as the triangle I'm trying to figure out and the right side the pattern. That's the way I do it. It's not the only way to do a proportion. I think it's the easiest way. Okay, so I've got X, and with the same triangle, I know I have square root of 6. And what I want on the right is the pattern. <coughs> so go back and look at my triangle. So what are the pattern corresponds to what X is? What's the value where the X is on the pattern? One. And what's the value where the square root of six is on the pattern? And that's your proportion. So now you just solve it and things on the bottom go to the top across the equal sign. All right. Now look, you can rationalize the denominator, right? That's really almost the longer way around. Because, okay, so let me, way, way back, we had a rule like this. The square root of A over B equals the square root of A over the square root of B. Yes, we had that rule. It probably was on your rule section last test. And we're used to going from this to that, but let's go the other way. So wouldn't this end up being the square root of the fraction 6 over 2? Which therefore reduces to? Square root of 3. And I can just go square root of 3. And by the way, once you understand these and the relationship, you can kind of do them quicker as well. Now, look, if you can't think through that fraction, oh, I can't remember that stuff, then just rationalize it. Square root of 2 over square root of 2. The top will simplify to 2 times the square root of 3, and the bottom will be a 2, and the 2s will divide out, and you'll still get the square root of 3. And you better, because it's math. So either way, you're going to end up there. All right, so what happened here? You got real simplistic things where all we're trying to do is get you to understand the relationship. Um... 3, 3, 3 times the square root of 2. 7, 7, 7 times the square root of 2. Um, an eighth, an eighth, an eighth times the square root of 2. It's real simplistic because, you know, those are just simple things. So let's, uh, let's, let's see how your brain is working. I want you to look right here. 
don't draw anything. I just want you to think. I'm just going to throw some values out, and you tell me. I'll ask. I'll I'll put an arrow, and you tell me the other ones. All right. So here we go. So what if I said square root of five? What would this one be? And what would this one be? Good. Square root of five times the square root of two is the square root of. Awesome, right? It'd be square root of ten. Same, same, that value times the square root of 2. Look, what does it matter what it is? Uh, all right, uh, 3.7. What is that one? And what is that one? Square root of 2. Again, whenever they're straightforward, it's pretty simplistic. I don't care if it's a fraction. You know, okay, half. So this is, and again, this one is over 2, right? Pretty easy in that kind of a format. Now, some of you that, that are catching on, um, if I had the square root of, well, I don't want to go too hard because I don't want to mess your brain up. If I had the square root of 10, any idea what this is? Yeah, it is the square root of 5 and the other one is the square root of 5. All right. So once you understand the pattern, it's pretty easy. If you didn't get that, fine. Use a proportion. All right, off you go with proportion land. That's the way you're going to have to do it. All right, but if you see the pattern, then you know and understand what's going on. Okay, so that is 30, 60, or 45, 45, 90, and I somehow lost my 30, 60, 90. It disappeared. I don't know where it went. Where are you? Probably before when I was hitting everything. So let's do now the pattern for 30, 60, 90. By the way, lest I forget, the homework's a little different than what you have written, so make sure at the end you write down the changes. Okay. Used to be we had to teach you how to get the pattern because they didn't give it to you, so I'm just still going to tell you where it comes from. If you start with an equal lateral triangle, if you start with an equal lateral triangle, that's the big triangle. Then what you do is you, you cut an altitude. That's the dotted line down the middle, right? Altitudes are perpendicular to the base geometry last year, right? Yeah, the altitudes all the time last year. All right, so anyhow, that's the dotted line with the right angle. By drawing an altitude, I now have two 30, 60, 90 triangles, right? Because I have a 90, I have a 60, the other one's got to be 30. And all I care about is one of them. So I'll do the left side. I don't really. I don't need this anymore, right? I don't need it. I just use the uh, the equilateral to kind of give you the idea. Okay. So again, I'm using the equilateral to get the the easiest values to play with. So I could call this left side here with the slash mark. I could call it a one. I could. If I call this side one, what is this side going to have to be? If I put a one here. What does this have to be? Okay, look at the triangle. All right, let me make it easier. If this side is one, what is this whole side? It's an equilateral triangle. Thank you, one. And therefore, then, what is the circle? There you go. All right, half a one. Beautiful. All right, but do you guys like fractions? No. All right, a few of you do. So how about let's make this a two? We can make anything we want because similar triangles are all proportional. We can do anything we want. We're just making it easy. We're going to make it a two. Now the bottom side is a one. No fractions. Half of two is one. All right, we can do that fractional math. Okay, and we're doing all this so we can figure out now not the hypotenuse, but the third side using the Pythagorean theorem with easy numbers. So what's the altitude, value of the altitude? Square root of 3. And that's the pattern for this. When the SAT gives it to you, it's going to look like this. You're going to put it on its side. They're going to put the 60 up here and the 30 up here. This is going to be 2x instead of just 2. This is going to be x instead of just 1. And therefore... The bottom side has to be, you got 2x and x, the bottom is x times the square root of 3, right? 
Because again, watch it. This is one. This is one times the square root of three. Okay. I'll deal with the proportions in a minute. Let's go through and again, we're looking for exact values. And again, this becomes big in trig when we want exact values. So here's what happens in trig. You've got to use, maybe you've got to use the sine of 60 degrees, but it's in the beginning of a calculation that's like half a page long. Do you want to round off like way up here? So it just gets further and further away from the truth? No, you want an exact value in there. And again, we got to deal with exact values. No big deal. Go to the 60 degree angle, give the value of the opposite, right? And the value of the 60 degree, the opposite of the 60 degree angle is the square root of three. Give the value of the hypotenuse, that's a two, square root of three over two, exact value. No decimal round off like your calculator will give you if you punch in square root of 60, unless you have it in a mode that's gonna dumb you down and tell you square root of three over two. But then again, tell me what the cosecant of 60 degrees is. And it would be two times the square root of three over three. All right, if my brain wants to flip that upside down. All right, tangent of 30. So go to the 30 degree angle, right? You're looking, remember, this is how we do trig. You go to the angle. Tangent is what? What over what? So what is the opposite of the 30 degree angle? What's the, uh, what's the um, adjacent of the 30 degree angle? Square root of three. And this one, we've got to rationalize the denominator, right? Which I hope you can do it in your head. Square root of three over three, right? exact value of the tangent of 30. And again, we can do this with all the trig functions. We can do the sine of 30, the sine of 60, the cosine of 30. By the way, if the sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2, what is the cosine of 30? Okay. Let me slow down with the question. Watch. If the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2, what is the cosine of 30? 30 degrees, square root of 3 over 2. What is the cotangent of 60 degrees? Square root of 3 over 3, all right? That's how that works. Okay, I'll keep bringing that up until it sticks in your brain. All right, let's go through some similar type situations now. Similar type situations. All right, so on this one here, and I'm just going to use red because it'll stand out. So as we look at this first triangle, they put a 7 here. So look at the pattern. In the pattern, what's where the 7 is? Well, if you look at the SAT pattern, it would be the X. If you look at my pattern, it would be the 1. Okay? Therefore, then, what would the value of Y be? It's always double, right? It's double. The hypotenuse is always double that leg. And by the way, you got to keep track of where you're at. I'm at the leg that involves the 60 and 90 degree angle of 7. So the 60, 30, the hypotenuse is 14. And therefore, Z is 7 times the square root of 3, right? The X, 7 times the square root of 3. And that's all you're doing when it's simplistic like that. Uh-oh, number 5. All right, so look at number five. They told us we got a one-third there. If I would have told you that this green line is 10, then you would say A is five. So if I tell you it's one-third, please tell me it's... Thank you. Those of you at least that spoke up. All right, a half of a third is one-sixth. Just multiply it times a half. You'll get there, all right? One half of a third is one sixth. Okay, and now that we know that, are we ready to do B? Remember, B goes off of the small one, right? This, from the 90 to the 30, always goes off of the small one. So it'd be one sixth times the square root of three, but we'll make that look better, and we'll say square root of three over six, right? We're just applying the pattern. So on the next one, number six, they gave us seven times the square root of three. 
Can you do D and N? That makes D 7 and N is 14, right? Because again, we're under, beginning to understand the pattern. Now, now again, by the way, all we're doing right now is learning these relationships. Then you got to apply them tonight. You got to apply them. There are a thousand different ways to apply them. Believe me, the SAT and ACT is not going to ask you any of these. It's too easy. They're going to ask you to apply it. So you got to apply it. So I'm, I'm giving you the basic knowledge. I can't show you. I can't show you every of the millions of applications. Right? I could show you. It's like um, taking the ODAX math test. We could sit there and we could study a hundred. A um, hundred subjects, and none of the hundred could be on the test. Or it's another application off the hundred that we dealt with. It's just the way it is. So you got to learn the basics, and then you got to apply it. Okay. So this one though is at least a couple steps involved, because look what's that? Look where the square root of ten is. What should be there? The square root of three, and instead it's a square root of ten. So we have to do a proportion. I always like dealing with the side that corresponds to 1 first. So I'm going to do C first. If I get C, what's D going to be? Double it, right? Esther said I saw it double it. Yeah, right? D is always double C. So let's get C and then we'll double it. So I'm going to do C over the value they gave me, square root of, of 10, right? That's this triangle. And then again, I always make the right, the pattern. It's the easiest way. Now, which side in the pattern goes with the C? The 1. Which side with the pattern goes with the square root of 10? Square root of 3. There you go. Just move the square root of 10 to the top. And, oh yeah, we got to rationalize the denominator, right? This one, 10 doesn't divide by 3, so we're not going to do the trick of putting them together, right? You would if it did. So this thing, what, ends up being the square root of 30 over 3? Square root of 30 over 3. And that's the value of C. So what is double that? Well, like 2 times the square root of 30 over 3, right? <laughs> double it. We just doubled it. Two times the square root of 30 over 3. Okay, so just hang on with me. Just a couple more minutes. Here, let's finish you. Let's do it this way. Let's, let's really mess with your minds. Okay, sounds better already. Okay, so I'm going to give you some values. You t I'm going to point and you tell me the other ones, all right? Okay, so let's go with uh, 14, all right? That one. That one. Okay, so 7 and 7 times the square root of 3. All right, how about, uh, how about this? Six fifths. 2 over 1 times 3 over 5 is 6 over 5. 6 fifths. All right? This one. Right? 3 fifths times the square root of 3, right? Or 3 times the square root of 3 over 5, right? Okay, good. So just be careful with those. Be careful with those. Be careful with those. That is the square root of 2. And this would be two times the square root of two. Again, some of you won't get that one. But once you learn, you divide that by the square root of three if it's anything else. So what if, okay, let's go, let's go one more here. So what if this was, what if this was seven? Okay, so hold on a second. Give your brain time to think. All right. What is this one? Okay, so, no, just just do what you did before. Just hold on a second. 
What, what one did I just do a minute ago? This was the square root of what? Six. And therefore, you in your mind said that this side is actually what? Didn't you say the square root of two, right? Yes? Okay. And you did something to come up with the square root of two, right? Okay. All right. So now what number did I just use? Seven. Okay, come on. Do it there. Do the same thing. So this one is 7 times the square root of 3 over 3, right? You've got to divide that one by the square root of 3, just like you divided the other one by the square root of 3, right? Same thing. Therefore, this side is 3. This side is what? No, I'm looking where look where the angle is. What is the value of this side? <laughs> ah, my brain hurts. All right, we just all right. Oh, I'll get my brain going in a minute. Yeah, that is that one, right? Boy. And that one, therefore, would be? 14 times the square root of 3 over 3. And again, if you can't do that in your head, and everybody won't be able to, then what you got to do on this kind is you got to make the proportion. And uh, the proportions are pretty simple to finish if you set them up that way. It depends on how you set them up. All right, so here's the change on the homework. You go high here. So 1 and 2 is added. 26 and 28 is added. You need to draw a picture, but no original. And then um, the being above, I think that's different on yours. Just change it to just 42. Draw a picture. It does have an AB part. Um, draw a tough picture. Draw a tough picture. Okay, I'll do that. All right, draw the picture. And hopefully that'll get you going. All right, I'll be available after class anybody or after school if anybody needs any help. Help.